2018 is coming to a close, which means it's time to make some predictions about trends in technology for 2019. We'll mostly be looking at the web, but I also want to talk about important things going on in native development, social media, and finance. At the end of the day, app development's all about building products that make people happy, and there's some really exciting emerging technologies that I can't wait to explore on this channel in 2019. If you're new here, like and subscribe, and you can find a full write-up with this video on Medium. Prediction number one is that web components will finally go mainstream. The funny thing is that I could have made this prediction in 2012 and I would have been completely wrong. They've taken too long to standardize and find browser support and have never developed the rich ecosystems like you see in React, Angular, and Vue. We desperately need web components because we have really smart people working on these frameworks that are duplicating each other's work over and over again. Like, do we need a dozen different libraries wrapping Bootstrap or Material just to work in a specific framework? And how many times do we need to reinvent date pickers or tooltips or other common UI elements? With web components, we can build a really badass date picker once and then use it in every single framework or anything that uses HTML. Web components will grow in 2019 for two reasons. First, we have almost universal native browser support, especially with Edge moving to Chromium. But more importantly, we now have the tools to build web components at scale via Angular Elements, Lit Elements, Stencil, Skate.js, and others. I'm not just saying this, I'm building my next product, Fireship IO, with web components. And even though it's a static site, it can deliver an experience as engaging as a single page application, and it's faster and more flexible. But frameworks aren't going anywhere, and that brings me to prediction number two, that Angular, React, and Vue will continue to grow in 2019. It's pretty clear that these are the big three choices for front-end development. They all solve similar problems, but do it in different ways that just seem to work well for different types of people. Personally, I have a love-hate relationship with all three of them. In 2019, I predict React will get hooks, which allow you to write components without a class. This means you can manage state directly in a function, which fits into the ergonomics of React. Angular will get the new Ivy engine, which will make it smaller, faster, and easier to debug. And Vue.js will get version 3, which is being completely rewritten in TypeScript. And speaking of TypeScript, that brings me on to prediction number three, which is TypeScript will continue to grow. Even people from the React community seem to be migrating over to TypeScript over the alternative flow, which is sponsored by Facebook. That brings me to prediction four, another Facebook-sponsored project, GraphQL. GraphQL is also going to grow significantly in 2019, but it's definitely not going to replace REST as you might hear from certain people out there. If you have multiple client-side apps that need to query the same backend for different slices of data, GraphQL can be an extremely beneficial tool, and far superior to REST in many ways. But there are a bunch of trade-offs, and it might not be right for every project, so make sure to do your research before just jumping on the hype train. Now let's move on to Firebase. As a GDE, I know some really awesome stuff in the pipeline that's not public yet. All I can say is that Firebase is going to continue its pattern of releasing really awesome features that you won't find on any other cloud. A few things that have been hinted publicly though with Firestore in particular would be automatic backups, group subcollection queries, and geolocation queries. And we're also likely to see additional runtimes for cloud functions like Go, Kotlin, Swift, and others. Now let's look at another huge trend that's probably the most important one of all, which is WebAssembly. Now, I don't think WebAssembly is going to take over in 2019 or anything like that, but I do think it's at the point where you should start learning it. It's already being used in production in apps like AutoCAD and Figma, but it's very intimidating to the average JavaScript developer, myself included. That's why in 2019, I plan on releasing some videos about Rust, which is a programming language developed by Mozilla that I think offers the best path to getting started with WebAssembly. And just like GraphQL and REST, Wasm is not going to replace JavaScript, but it is something that gives us additional options as developers and entrepreneurs that we should explore. Now let's move on to prediction number seven, Flutter. When I first saw Flutter, it didn't really make any sense to me. Why would Google care so much about a cross-platform tool for developing iOS and Android apps when they're already maintaining the Android platform? But it turns out Flutter is not about iOS or Android, it's about Google's next generation operating system, Fuchsia. Nobody knows exactly what Google's doing with Fuchsia, but it's rumored to replace Android and run pretty much everything under the Google umbrella by the early 2020s. And how are developers going to develop these apps on Fuchsia? They're going to use Flutter. So if you learn Flutter today, you'll be positioned to develop native apps on virtually any platform in the near future. And it actually delivers a great developer experience, so expect some videos on that in 2019 as well. Prediction number eight is the continued adoption of serverless. Now, AWS already dominates the cloud, but they released a game changer for serverless just a couple weeks ago. It's called the Custom Runtime API, and it allows you to build a serverless architecture with any backend. That means any programming language, any libraries that you need can be available in that runtime without a Docker container. This solves one of the biggest limitations with functions as a service, which is not being able to control the runtime, and also potentially solves vendor lock-in if other clouds adopt similar APIs. Computing resources are just like the electricity that comes out of your wall. It just needs to be there to run your gadgets or run your code in this case. 
Serverless won't replace Docker containers in 2019, but we are moving in a direction where running code in any language is as simple as plugging something into a wall. But there's an alternate universe here, and that's prediction number 9, which is the decentralization of computing. The mainstream hype with Bitcoin is obviously over, and it's not going to go to $300,000 or anything like that. But the underlying technology gives us the potential to build decentralized apps that are not only stable, but incentivized for the user. Like, YouTube pays me a small amount of advertising revenue for these videos. But imagine a decentralized platform where I could earn advertising revenue independently, and everybody else could share the earnings of the compute resources required. This might just be a pipe dream, but I think it will only take one or two successful decentralized apps to really open the floodgates to a full wave of new technology. And that brings me to prediction number 10, which is that machine learning will be implemented in apps by developers that have no experience with machine learning. This is primarily made possible by new services from AWS, GCP, and Azure, and the implementation of new computing resources like TPUs that can eat through data at a staggering rate. We're approaching a world where ML will be a part of basically every technology experience that we have, everything from IoT to our washing machines to our phones to our kids' toys. So no matter what you're working on, it's probably a good idea to think about how machine learning integrates into it. The AI godhead will not emerge in 2019, but you definitely don't want to make it mad. So now let's move on to the bonus round where we look at some trends outside of the development world. Let's start with social media. Facebook has had more scandals this year than I can even count. I stopped using the platform many years ago, but I think the argument to do so in 2019 is stronger than ever. But to counter my own point, Instagram is still growing and popular in youth culture, so Facebook the company will be just fine. And they owe a lot of that success to their decision to steal a bunch of features from Snapchat. Which is kind of sad for Snapchat because it is looking like a dying platform in 2019. And their users are going to the platform that stole their features, Instagram. But that's just life, I guess. And speaking of dying platforms, Twitter once again looks like it's dying as it does every year, but I think it'll see its worst user declines in 2019. And while I use Twitter and enjoy it, I think it's well past its golden age. One thing that is becoming clear is the importance of video content. I'm not just saying that because I make YouTube videos, but the actual numbers support it. And we have social video platforms like TikTok growing like crazy. So if you're building an app or marketing an app, you should definitely think about how video plays into that strategy. And the last thing to consider is the stock market and specifically tech stocks have been way down the last few months. Stocks are usually a leading indicator of other things to come, so just something to keep in mind. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap things up there. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in 2019.